to. Let me just lower this background. I've been playing this background music. Um, there we go. It's so peaceful just before we went live. Um, good, mo good morning to you in North America. Good evening to you in the UK and Europe. Um, we have a change in this next set of uh, six weeks series of morning to evenings, which runs from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. Uh, UK time and uh, 5 p.m. UK time, but 12 noon in the US. Um, we're going to use a book called uh, My Utmost for His Highest. Now, Steve got me this book uh, a while ago. I know, Steve, you must have thought I was never going to use it, but I, I just waiting for the right time, and I just thought it was right, because I don't know, this This is... I wasn't sure how it was going to work even, you know, because I've never used this book before, this devotional. But I've got to say, I've been really blessed just by the first reading today, which is found in John 16, and the title is... My up oh, no no that's not the title my utmost for his highest what is the title I should know this saying that I've typed it out a number of times um, can you believe I've not put the title down on this one here we go do you do you now believe <laughs> you have to forgive me I'm still jet lagged <laughs> still jet lagged no I'm not I've I've got over that although my luggage didn't catch up with me and still one piece missing can you believe that it's over a week now anyway to to let's start from the very beginning <laughs> let me uh let's say hello to a few people i think that will get me out of my instead of me digging a hole kimmo's the first one and good morning kimmo from finland i've been praying about you a lot especially finland during these problems uh, Madeline Kirby, it was so great to meet you, Madeline, in Florida. Uh, so I'm so glad to see you as well. Debbie Shakespeare, blessings from Barry, Ontario, in the house. When are you coming to Jubilee? Well, you know what, Debbie? <laughs> it was such a hassle. It was such a hassle to get into the States, but we got there. But uh, I sat on the plane next to somebody coming home, and uh, they said, uh, they'd just been to visit their son. And believe it or not, Canada's in a worse situation than the US. So I'm hoping, I'm aiming for September. Um, you know, I don't want to meet up with the partners and everything and hopefully try and fit in Zach's church, Jubilee, in Aurelia. Now, Zach isn't the easiest one, easiest of ones to communicate with. I don't know if it's his ha African background, but <laughs> he, never, he never replies to his email, so it's always very difficult. Even when he's booked me in, it's difficult to get communication from him. Uh, but that's just the way it is. I'm not being negative about Zach. I love Zach, wonderful pastor. Uh, but hopefully September, uh, Lord willing, now, Hope, hopefully things will start to open up with the with the uh, COVID restrictions on a wider scale. I know England has uh, done away with all restrictions now. So hopefully Canada will uh, follow, but who knows? <laughs> um, so there you go, Debbie. Uh, Steve, good evening to you, Steve. Uh, I'm family from Anstey in Leicester. Thanks, Steve. We finally got on to this book, as I was saying. Um, Anne Richardson, greetings, travellers. Love from Kendall, Cumbria. Uh, Margie Hogg, so great to see you, Margie. I really enjoyed doing those conversations, those two mornings. Uh, I felt it was very deep, good stuff. Uh, I've got to try and find some way of recording those and putting them, having a platform so people can access them again. Uh, so good morning from Oklahoma. So glad to be back on the meditation. Yes, uh, we had a chat. I had a chat with Margie. We were talking about the Hebrew letters, and uh, I, I was just I value your prayers. How we can fit this in to do a, a regular uh, study on the Hebrew letters uh, would be great. Uh, Douglas and um, 
Uh, Douglas Farron, good noon hour. And Laura, forgive me, Doug, I'm, I'm all sixes and sevens tonight. It's my first day back. Uh, good noon hour from Bradford, Ontario, Canada. Blessings and a beautiful sunny day. It's been raining here. I fixed the next door's neighbour's fence today. Uh, not soaking wet. Uh, Judith Boone, glad to gather again. Blessings from sunny Kansas City. It's great, Judy. It's good to have the structure, do you know? I've enjoyed the two weeks off travelling, but it's really good to have the structure. Uh, of a morning and an evening. Uh, Barbara, good morning from Longview. No, no, sorry, Bob, I'm thinking of somebody else. <laughs> but anyway, good, good morning to you, Barbara, from Longview, Washington. Uh, what are you saying? The beautiful Pacific Northwest. Oh, I smell the ocean from here. Uh, Joyce, glad you're home safely. Yes, Joyce, managed to sort out the Wells Fargo stuff. Uh, I've got to get in touch with Ding Dong, buying hay and a hoe. Uh, <laughs> oh, my mind's going blank. Um, mercy, uh, Debbie, Debbie, back. Good evening to you, Deb. Uh, great to have you. By the way, I think Debbie's a Monday, isn't it, Deb? Do you have your um, hangout on tonight at uh, seven thirty? I think PM. Mercy Gay, good morning, John. You look so refreshed. <laughs> Believe me, I've had four days of sleeping. I've had four days of sleeping. Uh, I'm happy, thankful that you were here in the USA. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got to tell you, Mercy, I wasn't sure how, you know, because I've been out the country two years, and I, I do have a green card, but I wasn't sure whether, how that was going to work, you know, whether I'd have any difficulties, but it was so smooth, so smooth apart from all the, all the forms that you have to fill in from this side. Uh, Debbie Shakespeare, wonderful, yes, come on down. <laughs> he needs an administrator. <laughs> so do I, so do I. Um, so I can't, I, can't, I can't be too negative with Sack because I'm at the same myself. I don't know, it's my African heritage. Um, Linda Pennington, uh, missed you, missed you too. Uh, Barbara Haynes, good afternoon from Indiana. I really enjoyed the deep conversations between you and Margie. I thought they were excellent, uh, Barbie. Really excellent, the vanishing point. And um, we got these goggles, you know. Um, I think uh, Debbie will probably put it on the, on the comments. But it changes your hotel room. You know, you put them on and you're actually in another room. And I was actually in a room overlooking the ocean. Can you believe that? Anyway, there you go. Uh, deep conversations. Uh, Tammy, Tammy Vaughan, good afternoon from Michigan. Good afternoon to you, Tammy. God bless. Now, I want to pray for Ukraine today. Um, but before we do, let's go to the reading. And I'm just wondering how I can do this. Um, it's, let me see now, do I have the book on me? Uh, yes, I do. I finally, thank you, Kimmo, as well, for the link with Kindle. But I'm also going to put a link up. I was hoping to get it done today, but I had to get my taxes in. Last day today for taxes. And um, I was hoping to do this today because I put a link on in. And uh, when you go through that link, uh Vinepress gets a percentage, only small, 2%, something like that. But it all helps. But um, let me just show you this. Uh, my utmost, over 30 million sold. My utmost for his highest updated edition. Oswald Chambers. Now, is that clear for you? I think it is. Don't mess around with it, John. And it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, Oswald Chambers. Oh, hang on there, uh, Tammy. Let's take you off. You're, you're right on the ding dong. Your cat is sitting on the book. <laughs> um, do you know what? I I was so impressed just with the introduction to this. Um, isn't it amazing? It, you know, he died at the age of 43. He was born in Aberdeen. Uh, had connections in the US, ministered in the US and in Great Britain. Um, but died at the age of 43 and only published 
three books which weren't really, uh, they didn't become popular. No, I mean, he didn't have a wide audience. But it was his wife who was nicknamed BD. Uh, I forget now, Binny something. He had a nickname for her, but she was nicknamed BD. And she used to do that. Is that a stereograph? What do they call that when they're in a court and they type, you know? Well, she was one of those. She did shorthand. And um, behind the scenes, she was behind the scenes. It wasn't in on platform in ministry, but she sat in all of his meetings and she took notes on everything he spoke on. And after he died... In 1943, in Egypt, I think it was during the First World War, he wasn't killed in action, but uh, protracted a disease uh, and died young. Um, She gathered all the notes that she'd taken, and out of that came, well, a lot of books, but this one in particular, My Utmost for His Highest. Isn't that wonderful? And, yeah, you know, you look at the book and you don't see a name on it. It's a bit like Smith Wigglesworth was the same. Um, but my utmost for his highest is the most, uh, I think, the best-selling devotional in Christian uh, circles. So there you have it, stenographer. Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> I need, need all the help I can get. Uh, blessings from Pennsylvania, Joe and, and Mary. God bless you both. Um, Tammy Vaughan from Michigan. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, Debbie's praying for Ukraine. We'll we'll get there, Debs. Um, but that really struck me. It really struck me. It really touched me that during his lifetime. His ministry was very little known until he died. And it reminded me of that scripture where Jesus said, unless a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it can't bear fruit. And this is certainly bore fruit. Now, if we go to John 16, um, I'm hoping I can get this over. If we go to John 16, which is the reading, and I'm going to uh, just give you an outline. Uh John's Gospel, chapter 16. And the text is taken from verse 30 to 31. But I want to just point out something here, just give you an outline of the chapter. This chapter records, uh, make sure you can see this. Uh, It records... Three rounds. I've got to write slowly. That's the good thing about using the pen. It forces you of conversation. For some reason, my pen is leaking. Of conversation between Jesus And his disciples. Now it's important if you understand that because um, we're only using this text to hear, and it's the third round of uh, it's the third round of teaching uh, of conversation that Jesus did. Now let me do the dots for Margie because I know she loves the dots. Now she was actually getting drunk on Friday, not Friday on the Monday meeting in Dallas. <laughs> Oh, I had to laugh, Margie, because you're so serious. You're like myself, really, you know what I mean? You're like myself. Okay, three rounds of conversation between Jesus and his disciples. Now, let me just give you the uh, the examples here. Um, round one. Let me underline it. Uh, Round one was uh, Jesus speaking of the conflict if I got this right that was to come 
You see, people think that following the Lord, everything's uh, hunky-dory, but Jesus is warning them that was to come to them from the world. I'm going to pray for our brothers and sisters later in Ukraine. That's round one. Round two. Can you see that? Yeah. That's, it's hard because I, I'm thinking faster than I can write. Um, round two. No, I didn't give you the verses for that, did I? Verses um, 1 to 15. Round two is uh, verses 16 through to 28. Uh, and there are, there are three key things there. One is uh, three key words there in, in the conversation. The first one is the confusion. It's, the disciples didn't understand when Jesus says, in just a little while I will be gone and you won't see me anymore. Then just a little while after that, you will see me. So they were a bit confused over his statements. Uh, so the first thing was the confusion. The second thing in that conversation was the clarification. Jesus clarifies what he meant. Do you see the importance of having a personal relationship with the Lord um, and not just doing things out of religious duty? Uh, so, kind of, and then the comfort. Now, if, I'm, if it, Jesus says that the Father will give them all they need because of the Son in John 16, verse 23. And then he tells them the Father loves them dearly, verses 24 to 28. And then round three. And I'm, I really, you've got to do this yourself, really. I, I'm just giving you an outline to help you. But this, our text, and this is where our text is taken from. In round three, it's verses 29. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, to 33. I'm going to box that one. I just, I don't know. When I'm doing these dots, I just like to meditate on it. And, uh, it drove Margie or Margot or Margaret or whatever her name is uh, crazy, but she now understands, I think. <laughs> okay. In round three, uh, you have the disciples speaking. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and then you have the Saviour. So you have A, B. It's a conversation. But really... You know, the title, the theme today, Do You Now Believe? Um, let me just bring you back there. That's it. Do You Now Believe? Really, is Jesus is challenging them. Uh, yeah, now we understand. But, you know, how often do we say that? How often do we say change is coming and don't realise? And we think that we've entered into the change, but it doesn't really hit us till later on. Do you really believe is Jesus' response to them? Because then he goes on to say, look, you're all going to flee and leave me uh, and I'll be left alone. And that's what our reading's about today. We're going to go into that a bit later. But before we do that now, let's go over to uh, Ukraine and um, let's pray uh, for this nation very serious. And, you know, today I think Switzerland came out and said that they were also going to do sanctions which is very, very um, unusual for Switzerland. That's how serious it is. Um, 
Just excuse me while I take a glass of water. Now, I think what would be nice is if you could join with me in prayer here. Um, what are you saying, Kimo? Jesus was talking about telecommuting. You will be scattered each to your own home. Uh, Steve Farmer, Oswald died from peritonitis. He gave up his bed in operation for a wounded soldier to be treated. What a man. What a man. Um, let, let's go to Ukraine. I'll, I'll, we'll come back on that in a minute, Steve and uh, Kimo. Um, on your comments, but uh, I want to go over to Ukraine and um, on the map and just say, there we go. And I want you, if you could, to just make short comments and I'll bring them up on screen. I'll play the music in the background and we'll pray, but I'll open in prayer and it'd be good if you could just join me. Um, in conversation there. Don't leave it too late to make your comments because there is a delay and we are on a tight uh, schedule. Okay, Father God, we first of all come to you and we declare you are sovereign. You are sovereign, Lord. You told your disciples that if they follow you, that they will go through uh, persecution they will go through difficult times and we know that this year is a difficult time father we talked about it the end of last year that this is the letter bait it's those two opposites and father god even though there's great darkness on the earth and people are trembling that don't know you we know that our light will shine bright and we pray for the believers in ukraine we pray for the children as well, Father God, in the basements and in the undergrounds. And uh, I know Father must be terrified of what's taking place with the bombing and the missiles. And so Father God, hear our prayers as a united people from across the globe as we pray for Ukraine today. Uh, in Jesus' name I pray. And Linda, we just take that right now, the shalom of God over Ukraine. Let it be, Lord. Let the shalom of God rest upon this nation. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let it be, Father. Um, Barbara Pugh, I do believe that as God was with David, he will be with Ukraine against the modern day life. I, was, I mentioned that this morning, Bob's. I think we should claim that. And also there are other times, I think it was Hezekiah in the Old Testament when the city was surrounded and uh, against all the odds they overcame. And we pray that for Ukraine. We join our prayers with Barbara's right now. And we pray that in the name of Yeshua. Let it be, Lord. Uh, Doug, God's kingdom provision and miracles. Yes, Lord, release your angelic host there and hold back the enemy. Confuse the enemy, we pray. In Jesus' name. Debbie, Gideon had a small army, but God backed them up for victory and regaining their ground. In Jesus' name. We say amen to that, Debbie. We join our prayers with you. In Jesus' name. And shalom over Ukraine. Uh, Joyce, thanks Joyce for your, joining us in prayer. Joyce, uh, pour out your spirit over the Ukraine, drawing all to you, Father God. Lord, there's been many seeds planted in this nation, many seeds of the gospel planted by your, by your people. And I pray that that seed come forth right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Joyce. Kimo, give wisdom to people in leadership. Yes, yes. Strategy, wisdom. Pray for the leadership, Father, of Ukraine. Pray for the leadership of Russia. Pray that you'll soften his heart, Lord. And out of this, bring change. 
to this nation in Jesus' name. Uh, Barbas, we pray your will be done in earth as in heaven. We pray for our brothers and sisters and all the people involved in this conflict. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. In the name of Yeshua, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Debbie, send your angels armies. Yes, Lord, send your angel armies. Madeline Kirby, let no weapon formed against Ukraine prosper. No weapon, Father. Moggy Hog, like you did for the Israelites, be a pillar of cloud between Ukraine and the Russian army. In Jesus' name, we say amen to that, Moggy. And Richardson, shalom. Shalom, we pray. Linda, more signs, wonders, and miracles through this conflict, Father, for your people. For your people, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray for supplies. We pray for food supplies, for water, clean water, Father. In Jesus' name. And wisdom for those that are fighting, Lord, for the commanders. Wisdom and strategy from heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So there we go. Um, let me just take you off, Berlin. Um, Diane, showers of blessing. See, see what I mean about the delay on the uh, text? So that's why it's important when we get into this that we... Uh, let's see. Showers of blessing on the people of Ukraine. Amen. 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 Okay. I'm just going to lower this music a little bit. There we go. Let's go to the reading then. Um, okay, what I'm going to do on, as some of you are now, now bringing your prayer requests up are coming up late, but I'm going to put them out on the end, if that's okay. Let's go to the reading because... Um, uh, I want to get the reading and it's so good today. Do you now believe is the title. And then the scripture text is John 16 verses 30 to 31. By this we believe. Jesus answered them. Do you now believe? Question mark. Now we believe what Jesus asked. Do you? Indeed, the hour is coming that you will leave me alone. Many Christian workers have left Jesus Christ alone and yet tried to serve him out of a sense of duty or because they sense a need as a result of their own discernment. The reason for this is actually the absence of the resurrection life of Jesus. Our soul has gotten out of intimate contact with God by leaning on our own religious understanding. Now, we looked at that word in Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6, and we looked at that word um, acknowledge in the Hebrew, which is a part of seeing and Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. So it's very, very important to get into that heavenly place, to get into a regular, reg I can't emphasize this enough, to get into a regular time with the Lord, same time every day if you can do it. Uh, this is not deliberate sin and there is no punishment attached to it. He's talking about doing things out of religious duty. But once a person realizes how he has hindered his understanding of Jesus Christ, 
and caused uncertainties and sorrows and difficulties for himself. It is with shame and remorse that he has to return. We need to rely on the resurrection life of Jesus on a much deeper level than we do now. We should get into the habit of continually seeking his counsel on everything. Now, we, we looked at this word acknowledge and it begins with the smallest letter, the letter Yod. So in every little detail of your life, get into, a continual, uh, get into the habit of continually seeking his counsel on everything. It's the little things, church, that affect us. Instead of making our own common sense decisions and then asking him to bless them, he cannot bless them. It is not in his realm to do so. And those decisions are severed from reality. If we do something simply out of a sense of duty, we are trying to live up to a standard that competes with Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say the fruit of it. And this is so true in the church today. We become prideful, arrogant person, thinking we know what to do in every situation. We have put our sense of duty on the throne of our life instead of enthroning the resurrection life of Jesus. We are not told to walk in the light of our conscious conscience or in the light of a sense of duty, but to walk in the light as he is in the light. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. Now we mentioned this this morning, that you can't have true fellowship by using your own wisdom it has to be in those heavenly places with the Lord. And out of that comes true fellowship. We saw something of that in the Toronto uh, revival, lying next to people on the floor who couldn't speak the same language, yet we had this wonderful fellowship. When we do something out of a sense of duty, it is easy to explain the reasons for our actions to others. But when we do something, out of obedience to the Lord, there can be no other explanation, just obedience. That is why a saint can be so easily ridiculed and misunderstood. Amen. 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 Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful reading? Anyway, I'm going to put up some of your prayers and uh, the comment there from, uh, I think it was Steve made one and um, anyway, I'll, I'll look at that when we get to, but the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his wonderful face to shine upon you and out of the shalom of God May you move in him and not out of works of religion in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow morning, those of you that are joining me and any joining me in the early hours of the morning. The Lord bless. I'm going to just play you out with this tune now and bring some of your comments up and some of the prayers for Ukraine. Amen. Now I should have a should take